Time for round two of planting our 2022 garden. Everything's doing great. I'm gonna give you guys an update on how the sweet potatoes are doing, how the um, broccoli and cabbage and spinach are doing. We need to tend to some of those today. I'm getting pots ready for um, tomatoes. And guess what? You guys are so persuasive. You know, I said I was not planting any peppers this year because I had buku and uh, I've got the set of peppers out. We're gonna go ahead and plant some peppers. I don't know where I'm gonna put them. They might all be green stock, ga green stock garden um, peppers, but I got a set out. I'll share with you what kind of tomatoes I'm planting. We're starting some herbs and yeah, it's just gonna be a fun day of planting. Don't know how much I'll focus on like how to's and tips I have for you guys, but whatever comes to mind to share with you, I'll make sure to take time to do that. So I have my peppers soaking, pre-soaking while I tend to getting my tomatoes started. Um, so let those do their thing. Get this out of the way. And we will start our tomatoes. Okay, so I got two different kinds of basil out. I have Genevieve's basil and Greenstalk sent us with one of our Greenstalk planters, a sweet basil. So we're gonna do um, two of those. And I plan on planting a lot of basil out in the garden with my tomato plants themselves. And then also um, planting some up in my green stalk because I love going out and grabbing fresh basil to put on a grilled tomato sandwich. Oh my goodness, so good. So I want all the basil I can get. And I'm gonna put a handful of seeds, not a handful, sorry, a sprinkle full. So maybe like three or four in each cell. And, uh, just see what kind of germination we get. So I'm starting with the um, Genovese basil from In My Gardener. Oops, don't want that one. All right, and I love using chopsticks for planting. Um, it allows me to be somewhat gentle with everything. And then also, I know a lot of people, if you're new to gardening, there is, let me tell you something. Gardening is like a lot of things in the world. There's a thousand ways to do something the right way. But then there's a thousand people with opinions that every other one, every other person's way is the wrong way. <laughs> so take in all the information that you find and then just practice with what works for you. Um, I know a lot of people um, do high intensity seed starting and then do the prick method to take out what they want and that's great. Um, so I just say practice over the years and find out which method you like the best for you know, your setup and what you have to work with and go from there. All right, so basil is done. I had to go and grab, I know in my last video I showed using the plastic knives for plant stakes, like markers, but I have to put the dome on these um, because I need to keep the soil really warm. Um, so I am choosing these bamboo ones, and I think I should be able to break those in half where the dome can still go on it. Yeah. All right. I, I just found these bamboo plate plant stakes at TSC. Um, so probably any farm home store would have them. All right, basil. I don't really care on variety here. I'm just, uh, my only intent is to grow Lots of yummy basil. All right, and basil. Now, let's get into the tomatoes. We're growing lots of kinds of tomatoes. 
Let's see. I got out the purpley tie-dye pink. That'll be fun. It's a beefsteak style of tomato. All of these are indeterminate. Uh, Dr. Witchies. Last year I grew the Kellogg's. Oh my goodness. What a massive producer. I think it was my greatest producer of any tomato in the garden. The unfortunate part was while I liked it, it definitely wasn't a favorite. So we'll try the Dr. Witchies this year and see if I like that over the Kellogg's. Black Crimson tomato, we're growing those. A Better Boy tomato. I have lots of the Mountain Vineyards. That's what I'm hoping will be very similar, it looks like in style to Aroma or Amish Paste. So that'll be the bulk of my sauce making tomatoes. I throw all my tomatoes together, just so you know, anytime I make salsas and sauces. Um, but I do like to have a, lot, a decent base that is a purposeful sauce tomato. Cherokee purples, I'm gonna see how many seeds are left in this old pack before we get into the new one. Celebrity, yellow pear, and these are more of the Mountain House vineyards. All right, I'm not gonna bore you guys with all of that. Um, I'm gonna do the same thing with my tomatoes, put three or four seeds in each cell, go through and mark them with my seed markers, and uh, then we'll water them in. And I had such fun last year starting seeds from scratch for the first time, from scratch, you know, myself, and guys, I do not have like a fancy setup. I don't know if you guys can see back there, there's like a utility storage rack with some shop lights just sitting in my dining room. And then I have one of those cheapy, I mean, seriously, probably $25, $30 indoor grow houses that I bought some really cheap um, Walmart grow lights last year from their garden center. And they work great, they, they really do. Um, they don't have as much flexibility when it comes to like raising and lowering. So you kind of got to get creative how you either raise your plants up to the light or raise your lights up above the plants as they grow. So, all right, all my rows are marked. Let's get to planting. So we do get all of our, the majority of our seeds nowadays from Haas. Um, I will tell you though that I had wonderful success last year with these peppers from Ferry Morris, the brand that you can find at any big box store. Um, and I was at Lowe's yesterday and they still had a ton of seeds. So if you haven't gotten your seeds, everything, everything I could have needed to start a garden was still there at the store. Um, so, um, still plenty of seeds out there to be had. Um, I don't know how long that will last, so just keep that in mind. Alrighty, those the yellow pears are planted. I probably only will plant, honestly, when it comes to it, probably two out in the garden and then maybe one up here on the patio of these. But planting a whole cell pack like that of multiple seeds. Hopefully I get a couple um, in each cell germinated and that'll um, make sure that I have plenty to go around. Go the distance. All right, let's go on to the Berkeley tie-dye. We're not, um, beef steaks are definitely not one of my favorite tomatoes, but I do love um, them for, uh, as far as um, preserving, but I do love them for fresh eating. Um, so we will get a few of those going. And I, I similarly, you know, I'll probably plant two or three out in the garden. And if I have any extra, I will gladly share them with my father-in-law. He loves uh, fresh tomatoes for sandwich making and just eating really during the summer. I got, uh, he's got a fun project. He recently, oh, I don't know, not too recently, but had a stroke um, several years ago and has a hard time with balance. And it's getting to be where he can't manage 
his raised bed gardening anymore. So he's looking at getting into some container gardening um, up high off the ground. So last year they bought their first green stalk and um, I'm excited to see uh, what they do. We shared with them um, Hollis and Nancy's uh, YouTube channel. And if you guys are interested in um, container gardening, they're probably one of my most recommended channels for that. So that was the Berkeley tie dye. Okay. Alrighty, moving on. What else am I just planting a few of? Dr. Witchies. So last year, the reason why I ended up with so many Kellogg's in my garden, I literally probably had no less than 12 Kellogg tomato plants in my garden was because I completely lost track of my tomato seed starts and what was what. So it was just a random guessing game until they started fruiting, what got planted where. That was a lot of fun. But uh, if you are growing Kellogg's, um, they are like crazy, crazy producers, huge, huge tomatoes. It was really impressive. Alrighty. So Dr. Witchy, let's see what you got. Can you outperform the Kellogg's? Time will tell. I know this is one of Jess from Roots and Refuge favorite tomatoes and my girlfriend Constance over at A Good Life Farm shared these seeds with me last year. So I need to be a good steward of them and make sure that they come up nice and healthy. She shared with me the Dr. Witchies too. All right, let's move on to Rachel's favorite. Rachel's favorite is the Cherokee Purple. Guys, it is the most flavorful, in my opinion, tomato you will ever grow. It is rich, a really rich tasting tomato. Just, oh, it's hard to explain. It's just so delicious. Um, and I think it adds a really balanced flavor to sauces. Um, so I, I will probably do no less than six of these in my garden. I wouldn't say it's a massive producer. Um, it, it's okay. It's not like a and not like it's gonna knock you out of your, knock it out of the park with respect to production, but the fruit is incredible. Okay, Cherokee purple. Now what will I do when these all start coming up? So say I get actually four that come up in each cell, I will um, just separate them. Tomatoes are very, very um, hardy when it comes to separating young seedlings. So I'll just separate them when it comes time to potting them up and uh, keep what I need. So now I'm moving on to the Black Crimson, which I'm hoping is similar to the Cherokee Purple. I've never had this one either. So I love experimenting and learning while I don't grow um, with respect to staples, I always stick, I will always have a huge tomato garden, um, but I do like to challenge myself with different varieties. So I make sure I am growing the best variety for what I preserve and for my growing conditions. So you never know, you might just find something that actually ends up being amazing. All right, down to the last set, these mountain vineyards. I'm gonna do, again, it's nice, sometimes Haas will, in their seed packets, they have the little plant stakes, so now I don't have to make my own. And I'm doing, oh, these are nice pelletized ones. That's nice. Um, I'm doing 
all um, three of these cell packs with the um, Mountain Vineyard Tomato. No, it didn't come with very many, so um, they must be high prize seeds. That's what I'm guessing. That's what I'm going to tell myself. Alrighty. Two left. Alright, that's all the tomatoes. So I just have to water these in. And I'll head over to the sink and show you how I do that. I shared that on the last video, super simple. I mean, just make it as easy as possible, right? Um, if you're new to, um, I don't do anything. I try not to do anything that's too hard anyway, because I say I'm a lazy gardener. Um, if it's hard, um, I probably <laughs> wouldn't garden. So uh, let me just make one more steak for that one so I don't lose my way during potting up time. All right, we got all of our tomatoes done. Let's go over to the sink and water them in. Okay, time to start the peppers. Now, I didn't feel like going out in the garage and I already had these peat pots inside. This definitely would not be my preference or choice to use. If I wasn't lazy, I would go out to the garden shed and get my plastic pots. Why? So why don't I like these? They will mold, um, but there's, uh, you can just spray the outside of them with uh, peroxide to kill off the mold. And that's what I do anyway. Um, so not my preference for that reason. And I didn't talk about this, but just take your fingers and pack down that first layer of soil. And you want the, the root ball to have something to hold onto where it doesn't fall apart on, on you when you go to pull these out and pot them up. Um, and then the top layer can just be somewhat loose. I did use the peat, larger peat pots for the, um, for my hibiscus plants, which I'll get to show you they're coming up, and my loofahs. So far, two loofahs are up. So we'll be potting those up today, the hibiscus anyway, and then um, just give you guys a big update on how everything's going. Now, I also have a great video to share with you guys on how to get the most out of your pepper harvest by doing a method that is called uh, topping, topping your peppers. And I have done that successfully every year that I've grown peppers, whether I started them from seed or not, and or if I just store bought them. Um, so I want to link that video here and I'll try to have Todd put it in the description. Um, on how you would do that when you're starting your peppers, the first time you pot them up, and then how you would do that out in the garden once they start growing for you. All right. So these little boys are just ready for pepper planting. So you're gonna find a lot of videos out there that tell you to soak your pepper seeds 24 hours, put them in the paper towels, all of that good stuff. You guys do what, what you think is best and based off your history. I will let you know I have great success just gently soaking them while I handle another business and come back to them. So similarly, I'll probably put two um, seeds in each cell and because these are smaller cells, they're just two inch cells versus my three and or four inch that I was doing my tomatoes in. And we'll get our banana peppers planted first. So the tricky thing is working with wet seeds. You want to stick to your finger. <laughs> Stop. Well, I meant to share with you planting the jalapenos, but the uh, camera shut off on me. So we'll do the same thing. So I, hopefully you guys can see the diagonal rows in here. And I'm just dropping in gently, if I can get it off my finger, the wet 
pepper seeds. All right. And I was telling you when the camera was off that um, if you sterilize, like peppers can be one of those really tricky things to start, but if you um, make sure that you keep them in a really warm temperature because they like warm temperatures. So these will go in my grow tent and I just have my grow tent over my heat register. Um, I'll cover these with uh, the dome to keep that humidity level up after I water them in. And then one other step I take is I make sure that I sterilize my potting soil before I plant so that there's no chance that there's fungus or mold that will cause the little, oh, whoops, what am I doing? One, two, three, okay. Back to regular program speaking. <laughs> I lost my way. All right, um, so I'm just gonna pat those seeds in now, gently, not not pushing them down too firm because these are a uh, not a deep seed that you need to deeply plant. Um, and I was saying I sterilized my soil so that no mold forms or anything like that. All right. Well, on to, that was the California Wonder. Alrighty. And the next one I have is from a new seed company to me, uh, Redemption Seeds. I did plant some of their seeds last year, small family business. Um, and these are a Purple Beauty, I believe. Yep, Purple Beauty Sweet. And I grew purple uh, bell peppers two years ago and really enjoy the flavor there. I wouldn't say that they're too much different, um, but definitely very sweet pepper. Oh, all right, I'll be back. So <laughs> I'm just getting too distracted. What's in this jar is my cayenne peppers and I'm only doing um, four cells of the cayenne peppers. All right, we're heading over to the greenhouse, come on. Okay, so I'm going to be a rearranging just a little bit, but let me show you the, look at those. Those are my hibiscus plants and my lufus. And here is my first slips on my sweet potatoes. Can you guys see the little roots? Here, I'll pull them out for you. Look at there, growing roots. All right, I'll take you down and show you the other starts in a little bit, but I need to get my tomatoes in here. So, I just have the lights turned off right now so it doesn't blind you guys and make the lighting funny. Let me grab my dome and place that on top. All right, and that will be the sweet my tomatoes, but Todd was trying to show me up on starting sweet potatoes following everyone's recommendations that soil would work better than starting them in jars. So excuse the dirt on my floor. Well, I will prove to you that's not true. Rachel's winning. Look at that. <laughs> totally winning the game. So I'm going to have to get these out of my way. Let me come right back. I need to readjust this shelf and put my peppers up there. So this was the grow tent that I was telling you guys about. I got this so many years ago now, probably five years ago from Tractor Trailer Supply or TSC, people call it these days. I think they call themselves that. <laughs> um, and it was maybe 30 bucks or something like that when I bought it. And these little tiny grow lights I got last year, I'll just pull one out and show you, at Walmart. And they work really well. 
So once these, these will be fine like this for now. Once the seedlings start to emerge, I'm gonna have to raise this up closer to the lights, but this will be good now. And this is just sitting over a heat register. So it keeps this grow tent really, really nice and warm. I don't need any heat mats and can get away with it like that. So that is it for um, starting my first summer plants, my first summer garden. But I wanna give you guys an update on my cold hardy crops that I started, what, three weeks ago now? Cause it's time to give them their first feeding and thin some of them out. All right, grow up little babies. All right, over here though, come here. Let me, I'll show you and then I'm gonna turn the lights out. Vintage. Horrible germination though, guys. This was a brand that I'd never used before of seed. I, I don't remember what it was offhand. Um, and I planted like four or five in each one of these cells. <coughs> and the best I got was two. In some cases, none. Like here's one just still popping up. This one, like its leaves are just gone. Um, like it's coddling leaves. I don't know what happened there. Anyway, so I'm not doing anything with these with respect to potting them up because pretty soon what I've chosen to do with these is I'm just going to plant them with my strawberries and my green stalk and um, I'm going to start a different batch for the garden with using my Haas spinach seeds. These are This was not Haas spinach seed. Look at that germination though. That is why I brag about Haas seeds. Crazy good. Every single one, almost 100%. Three or four, that's what I put in these cells. I got three or four, but we need to thin these down to just two per cell. Um, so I'm gonna go through and pick the best and snip the others off and um, then we're going to get some food prepared. It's not quite time for me to feed them yet. Look at that roots. Look at those roots, guys. Crazy good germinate. Oh my gosh, so impressive. Last year, I completely killed my broccoli and my cabbage. This year, I'm doing so great. Like, look, can you guys see those? Look at those first true leaves. Look at those. So exciting. So exciting. All right. Oh, and these are so not ready yet, but look at those celery babies. All right. So let's get to cleaning these up. Isn't that so exciting though? I am so impressed. I have never picked them up yet, so I had no idea <laughs> the roots were doing that well. Okay, but I'm gonna hold one up to the camera so you can see. Can you see that front section, how there's four and there's like two really nice ones and two kind of shorter ones? I'm going to, let me come in so you guys can see. Oh, get up on my knees. Okay, you guys can see. I'm gonna just come in and snip that one out. Took them out, okay? Same thing with this one. You could totally pull these out. You don't have to snip it. I just don't want to disturb anything. This next one only has two in it. So I'm just going to see if I can gently kind of move one over a little bit. And it's about time for these to get some wind circulation on them to strengthen their stems, strengthen their stalks. But okay, down to that one. And then in the back section, there is three and I hate to take that middle one out because he's so nice and healthy, but just too crowded. So pop him off and I have baby chickens downstairs so I can take them all these little snippings and then they can eat those. But now we're down to just two per cell. About one more week, let those true leaves get a little bit bigger and then we'll be working on potting these up. So that's what I'm gonna be doing with all of these is just going through and trimming them down to just two per cell. Guys, I'm so excited. I cannot believe I did this. <laughs> After 
last year was my first time even trying and killing them all. Um, I'm glad I tried something new. Let me tell you what I did. The only thing different, last year I tried starting them in that greenhouse, just like I am with my peppers and tomatoes with the domes on it. Just too warm, I think. These, I started no dome on, just out underneath the lights. My house stays pretty cool, like 65, and um, they look so great. Look at that, so excited. So excited. Now, what am I gonna be feeding these guys with? It's not barbecue sauce, I promise. It's a tomato uh, liquid, uh, Neptunes, the Neptunes liquid all-purpose organic fertilizer. This is super, super concentrated. So I'll do a double dilute of this for a, for a standard feeding like on a mature plant. And that's what they're going to get fed for um, once a week here on out. So I'll feed them after these are still pretty nice and moist, but I will feed them as soon as their next time that they need watering comes up. Oh my goodness, so darn cute. Look at that, perfect little rose. Um, and we're not too far from planting these out in the garden. So my last frost date is, okay, I just looked at it all this morning so I could make sure to tell you guys. When you look up your last frost date, all you need to do is type in your zip code, last frost date, it'll come up. What you're often gonna find is the average. So they go based off of usually a 30 year record and there's the first last frost date, the uh, like the earliest average, the average, and the latest average. So my earliest last frost date could be as early as March 30th. My m average last frost date is April 28th, and my latest last frost date is May 10th. So these can go out in the garden about two weeks before your last frost date. So I'll probably wait till that last week of April and plant these out. They'll be nice and mature. Um, So the next time you see these little guys will be when we're potting them up to bigger pots while they wait to see their garden debut. So thanks guys for coming along with me on getting more starts, our first summer garden crops going. That's so exciting. And I'll see you guys on the next update. Have fun where you are, grow something big, and don't get discouraged about failures. Like I said, I killed all of these last year, but this year, look at this. Learn from each and every opportunity. See you guys on the next video.